if you're over the age of 35, or especially over the age of 40, there is an actual benefit to utilizing either branch chain amino acids, essential amino acids, or leucine. This gets frustrating because online, it's really difficult to look at all the nuance, right? It's, we see the big glaring articles or we see the big glaring headlines and possibly even the abbreviated or misinterpreted versions of studies. But there is still a lot of merit to leucine or essential amino acids, especially if you're trying to maintain muscle as you get older. So there was a new study that came out in 2024, and I did another video talking about it more so from like the muscle building side, but I wanted to dive into some other details specifically for just maintaining muscle as we get older. It might literally be one of the most important things that you could take, and I think we're gonna see more research coming out in it. So we're gonna talk about dosing, we're gonna talk about how to take it, when to take it, we'll get into all of that. So let's go ahead and dive in. And after today's video, I put a link down below for 35% off Sunday's dog food. That's right, if you wanna build muscle, eat dog food. No, but I know that a lot of my followers, a lot of people that watch my videos have dogs. I've got three. Sundays is a human grade dog food, which means it's not like traditional dried kibble that's just garbage. It's human grade, which means if you did want to eat it for more muscle protein synthesis, you probably could because it's human grade. It's human grade food. It's the only human grade dog food that's on the market formulated by a veterinarian who really had her heart in the right place. And that link down below, again, is a 35% off discount link. So a big thank you to Sundays for making this video possible and check them out after the session. Okay, the first thing I wanna talk about is a study that was published in Frontiers Nutrition. Now, this is a large study, 17 randomized controlled trials, okay? And what they found in this study, they were looking at leucine supplementation. So leucine is the primary amino acid that would be in branched chain amino acids or in essential amino acids or just straight up leucine. So subjects consumed leucine and they were looking at were there increases in lean body mass? Did they put on muscle? Did they get stronger? Yada, yada. And what they found is that there were not increases in lean body mass. So most people say, forget it. It's not gonna work. It's not gonna put on muscle. Well, look at not everyone is like eating enough or eating enough protein to like put on muscle, but we do need to look at some things. What they found is that there was a significant increase across well, 17 studies in grip strength and in gait speed in older people. What does this have to do with you? Like really, like does it mean anything? It actually means a lot because grip strength and gait speed, those are two of the key things that we look at when we're assessing sarcopenia or muscle wasting. So when gait speed decreases in an older person, it is very indicative of them losing strength and losing muscle. And grip strength is also a huge one. Grip strength is actually a predictive marker of lifespan. And so it's a good indicator for longevity. So we're not talking little minute increases. We're talking when leucine supplementations there, there's an increase in grip strength. What does this tell us? Because there's no increase in muscle mass. Well, it tells us that there's probably some unique avenues in which leucine alone could be helping preserve muscle. So it may not help you maintain, or it may not help you build, but it might help you maintain, which becomes almost more important anyway. Like building is great, but we just wanna maintain. Where things get sketchy is that a lot of the research that looks at leucine and throws branch chain amino acids under the bus or essential amino acids under the bus, and I've done that myself. I've thrown BCAAs under the bus. I am in team EAA all the way. Either way, point is, is that they're looking at leucine and stuff in isolation, okay? So let me talk about another paper that was really interesting. It was published in Clinical Nutrition and it looked at leucine supplementation along with food. So in this study, they gave people four grams of leucine along with their meals, okay? So three meals per day, four grams of leucine with each meal. And these were older people. And what they found was that after two weeks, when they would take leucine with the meal, it would increase the post-absorptive muscle protein synthesis of that meal. So because they were eating enough protein through their diet, the leucine made that protein more anabolic, essentially. So there is clear evidence that leucine, when taken in along with enough protein, is anabolic, but at the very least, will help preserve muscle. 
But now I want to talk about something very interesting. There is an interplay with leptin. So we have seen in various bodies of research, including this Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research study that was published in 2024, that leucine supplementation increases leptin. Okay, where does leptin come into play? Leptin actually has an impact on our muscle size and muscle strength. And we've seen this in the rodent model research. There was a study in the journal Physiology that took mice that were called fat-free mice. This means they had like 0% body fat. They found that these mice had a really hard time, could not build muscle, and did not have good strength. When they added fat to these mice, 10% fat, they suddenly were able to build power, strength, and muscle. Okay, well, it looks like fat makes us stronger. Well, it might in some ways, but what they actually found is that they took these mice and then they blocked their leptin receptors. So basically, leptin couldn't bind. They were like, well, let's see what happens if we add fat to the mice now that they can't absorb leptin. They made the mice fatter and they did not get stronger. Whereas the ones that could absorb leptin did get stronger. So what we learned from this is that leucine impacts leptin and leptin impacts muscle preservation, muscle growth, and strength. And there's other studies that back this up too. Like it's not just in this little one rodent model study. We've seen in the Chinese Medicine Journal, 2023, we've seen that essentially leptin, low leptin is a marker for atrophy. So as people atrophy, muscle wasting, leptin goes down. And the muscles start to develop more leptin receptors to try to scrounge as much leptin as possible. So we now know that leptin, which is secreted by our adipose tissue, so it is, fat does play a role, but leptin may help signal us to preserve and build muscle. So by taking in leucine, are we increasing leptin? Possibly, or actually, quite frankly, yes, we do see that in a lot of literature. So as we get older, taking in three to five grams of leucine with meals could be huge, especially if you're meeting only minimum protein requirements. So the one study that I mentioned, the clinical nutrition paper, they were just barely meeting the RDA. The RDA for protein is disgustingly low, but it's the bare minimum, right? Now, what we see is the increase in muscle protein synthesis when leucine is taken along with that. What we do not know, because we haven't seen literature on it, is will leucine help if you're eating 300 grams of protein? Maybe not, because you're already getting enough protein. But for older individuals that maybe have a hard time eating, you're not getting enough food in, you're concerned you're not able to get enough protein in, having three to five grams of leucine or three to five grams of branched chain amino acids or a scoop of EAAs with your meal might be the difference between you getting muscle protein synthesis that's adequate to maintain out of your diet or not. So it's an easy, inexpensive thing and as you get older, it's probably gonna become more important and possibly even more effective. So don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Just because the meatheads don't wanna use, and I'm a meathead, so I can say that. Just because the meatheads don't wanna say BCAAs are good, doesn't mean that leucine, BCAAs, or EAAs don't have a place when it comes down to longevity. I'll see you tomorrow.